Hello and welcome. I'm Luca De Rio, and in this short video, I want to show you how Corona Renderer is using a photometric light. I have this scene with two emitter, and these are kind of fill lights. I'm using them to um, create the the light, the this kind of global light inside my scene. And uh, you can see the intensity of the lights according to this panel and this rays. I really like this option because um, they are um, rectangular lights with a certain shape, a certain intensity related with the camera exposure. So you can increase or decrease the amount of intensity of the light as well as increase and decrease the exposure of the camera. What is interesting is that this uh, intensity is related with the size of this line. So you see how we have a visual feedback and I'm not using directional light but you can also activate this option to have parallel rays or spread the light inside the scene. So I'm, I'm reverting back to the option and checking how the scene looks uh, uh, from the top you can um, understand that this light is uh, stronger than this one so we have more light coming from the right part here. I'm defining right part because my camera is checking in this direction and so um, the light is arriving from the right, right part of the camera. The core of this uh, recording of this lecture is this emitter here, this spotlight that is emitting light with one specific direction and is using the IES file format. So even if the IES file format, as you may notice here, is uh, in use by this uh, panel, well, actually activating the IES light, the photometric light, doesn't mean that the light will work. I can activate or, or deactivate, but it's important that a file is associated with this photometric uh, emitter. So selecting this light, you can see that I have one uh, photometric uh, file associated with this. Uh, realis.is file. I have the path here, I have information about the, the file. They are not so interesting, um, they are just information on the manufacturer. It's interesting how I obtain this file. Actually, we have different uh, ways. Uh, one way is to download this file from internet. You can find a lot of them and they are all for free. So. Uh, you can open your browser and start searching, uh, googling for uh, photometric file, IES file, uh, and so on. You will find the producer of, of fixture of this light emitter and they will offer you for free their photometric uh, file. They are the, somehow the mathematical formula to define how the light is uh, spreading inside the environment. So we can say that uh, this photometric file contains the light model of this light. And uh, why we need this photometric light? Actually, to be physically correct, to be um, very close to the light fixture that we are using inside our render. So if you are using uh, one light co uh, created by Philips, for example, and you have a specific light emitter, Maybe you want to download the associated IS photometric file. Now the problem is that sometime as a 3D artist we have some specific idea of our composition and we don't care so much about being physically correct. Um, don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying that we don't want to use physically correct uh, um, situation. Simply we want to achieve a visual goal and this visual goal maybe is not related with the, the lamp that we are mounting. So for engineering purposes, I perfectly understand that we need to respect the light intensity emitted. But for uh, pre-visualization, maybe we want to add our artistic touch. We want to work on the mood, on the feeling of this image. And uh, we are not so much constrained on the precise amount of candelas or looks or lumen that are emitted from this light. So this brings me to the other solution for the photometric light. 
um, not the one that involve us and the browser to search and to create our collection of uh, absolutely free photometric file, but um, involve the usage of one software. Now this software is not for free, and you may say, why should I buy a software that uh, uh, is for payment when I can download all the photometric file? Well, it's up to you. Um, um, we can start searching here for the file, but if we want to use this uh, software, we can download the version for PC or for Macintosh, and I already have it here on my desktop. And with this software, I can decide the intensity of my light according to the angle. When I'm satisfied of the shape of this light, I can press here Save IS, and the software is saving my file that then I can use inside the Corona Renderer. I was telling you about being more specific for engineering purposes and yeah, there is also the option for engineering. If you click on advanced, you have all the information in candelas and looks related to the luminous flux of this uh, um, light emitter divided by the various angle. So we have all the steradian uh, surfaces of this uh, sphere somehow where we are emitting light. We have the distance uh, from the light emitter and uh, the object where we are emitting light. So let's suppose we have, uh, I don't know, two meters and we have a luminous flux of uh, 5,000 lumen. The power is not relevant for this um, for this computation is just for the efficacy, so we can have 150 watts, you know, and this efficacy of our lamp. And here we can define then all the intensity. So if I want, uh, I can have my light emitting, uh, you know, I am i don't care so much about the candelas when, when I define my light. I work like this. I use the basic and I try to obtain a shape that more or less represent the, the light that I want to obtain. So I can have a wide, light or I can have a total narrow light. When I'm satisfied, I open the advanced, I put here inside the numbers that should be used then inside Corona Renderer. So here when I will associate my light, I can define in Corona Renderer if I'm going to use uh, lumen, candela, lux uh, and so on and I will use lumen. So 20,000 lumen here will correspond to the 20,000 lumen that we are adding here and the light that will emit here, the, the intensity, will have somehow this shape. So it's very cool how it works. And, uh, and uh, let's see with the render. I put in solo mode just the IES light so we can see what is going on. I press render. I like Corona Renderer because while he's rendering, I can still uh, talk with you and I can show you the other uh, options that are activated here. I just activated Corona 121, it's the last version, it was released uh, in August and I recorded a uh, first impression about this, uh, this Corona Renderer. So I'm not explaining you the, the values here inside, this is not a tutorial on how to uh, create a uh, a nice render with Corona Renderer. So in the scene here, I'm just showing you the settings that I'm using. In the performances, I have this path tracing, UHD cache and progressive. These are the values inside the UHD cache. So you will notice that these are the default values uh, when you install Corona Renderer. And I really like this software because the default values are quite well balanced. Uh, somehow one doesn't need to, to, um, to work here inside and to change uh, so many values. It, it's already working out of the box. Then you can fine tune, of course, but somehow it's not necessary. And uh, well, I can interrupt it. This is my, my render, so I can store it in max. And uh, well, here I'm using the exposure value is the only setting that you don't have by default and this inside the scene and camera value here. No. It's just because I was working and I converted this scene from V-Ray.
So that's it. You can see how the light cone is uh, emitted. I have this uh, very narrow cone and uh, is losing intensity according to the angle. While the angle is getting wider and wider, the intensity is lost. So we have this uh, um, two light panel that I was describing at the beginning to fill the light here inside the scene and uh, cooling down the, the, the mood and the result. While this light has a proper temperature, uh, I don't remember how much, I can't select it from here, but it's around 5,000 or 5,500 uh, Kelvin uh, um, degrees. Uh, my camera is uh, white balancing on 6,500 um, degrees. So this is the final result. Now, instead of uh, waiting, because I'm rendering with low resolution, 600 per 600, I want to show you that I already prepared some render. And this one on the left is the beauty pass. The, how the final result was looking. There are a little bit of fireflies here. I had to, to leave it render a little bit longer, but you can see here the, the cone. You can feel the, the intensity of this uh, IES light. I have also one close up here on this area where you can see the angles as I was telling you. And here I have a very close close up. I'm, I zoomed in in this area. In that region and you can see how the the light are sharp uh, sorry the shadows are sharp here and getting smoother and smoother so that's it i hope you enjoyed this uh, video and thank you for watching